Greetings, everyone. Um, this is Tiffany Martinez. Um, I hope you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. Um, I decided to come over here and water my, I call them aloe twins, to water my aloe twins, give them some water, and so they can stay, uh, continue to thrive. You know, even we as humans, if we don't um, drink water, you know, it slows us down and could, it contributes to some of our uh, health issues. I have a lot of little bottles here because I try to uh, have something ready just in case I forget to come in here. Um, and I just say that because of, uh, you know, the whole list of uh, chronic pain issues, intractable pain. I never know how I want to feel from day to day. Like planning something is is virtually impossible. And I also uh, came over. I have a Billy Holiday uh, um, wall here set up for her. And I have some more things that I need someone to uh, hang up for me. This one fell. It was up there for. Um, well over a year? No, I would say about two years. And, um, I have some double-sided tape and stuff. So, because it's so humid, things are starting to calm down. But, um, that's not really what this video is about. It's mostly about, um, my husband Henry and how much I endlessly miss him like so much these are the two bears if you're new to my youtube channel uh, my husband and i we met online back in the summer of 2001 and in 2000 the summer of 2002 um, i i came out from the east coast to cali to meet him in person and to basically make sure like a thousand percent i wasn't being catfished you know and I came out the, uh, it was around the end of June, because I stayed for a week. I just know when I got back, um, well, maybe it was like the third week, because when I got back, I had to, you know, put my two weeks notice in, and, because I flew out also to have uh, an interview, uh, so that I may have a job transfer. And I was very fortunate that they had one, the same company here in South Cali. And it was just right outside of San Diego because we lived there for a short period of time. And uh, but anyways, you know, I think we, I don't know, we agreed that we will give each other um, a present, like a gift, something that they could hold, we could hold on to. And just say it like that, they but us, um, we have something to hold on to when I go back to the East Coast, you know, to finish out my time there and finish packing and things like that. Well, my husband's birthday is on March 17th, and so that makes him technically a St. Patty's birthday, baby. So, or boring day. And um, I said, well, this isn't about his birthday or my birthday since we were both born in March. But, so I said, no, I won't get that one. I want something that, that he can read the tag and know that, um, that's how I feel about him. So when I got to Cali, this was after, you know, 9-11. So they didn't let people come up to like the terminals the way that they used to. Like, you know how they meet you. So he was on the bottom level. So when I got off the plane, there was no one upstairs. Because I had never flown into uh, the air the airport in San Diego. So I didn't know how it was. So I just remember getting off the plane and it was empty up there. I was like, I didn't panic. I didn't panic at all. Because I was like, it's always that possibility that you're going to get stood up, you know. But we went through a year of uh, literally handwriting letters. Like, I think I wrote him a letter, like, every single day of the week. And I would always mail it from my first client's um, home. 
And next thing I know, uh, you know, we were sending each other just like, like little uh, care packages, things like that. So, and I figured if this person is writing, handwriting letters, handwritten letters, and we're spending hours on the phone, this was back long before unlimited talk and text and all that, like, anyways, <laughs> if you know me personally, you already know this story anyways, so, um, I'm thinking about asking my cousin to, you know, write the story and make it into a book, um, something that can be documented and to share, either publish it or um, just keep it in the family so they'll always know that, you know, love is out there. You don't have to look very far when it's meant to be. So anyways, uh, uh, I got on that bear and I had it in my luggage and as I said, I'm not going to panic. If he stood me up, it is what it is. I could say, hey, at least I went to San Diego, and hell, I might still complete the job transfer. It would just be me. Like, I don't mind that new journey, um, per se. But, so, I I got on the escalator, and I rode down, and I had the biggest smile on my face when I saw him. And we hugged each other for the longest time. Like, you know how they do, like, in movies, and then they, they do that that pan around the couple who is hugging and kissing and things like that. I mean, he did not let go of me, and I did not let go of him. Like, it was just that deep, right? So, <laughs> after he got done hugging me, and I got done hugging him, he handed me this bear, because he knew that I liked bears, like, a lot. And I was just taken back, like, well, where's my luggage? And he goes, I don't know. And I was like, no, where's my luggage? Because I had thought he had taken his gift out of my bag. And um, that wasn't the case at all. So I went to go get my luggage. And he still, I can't remember if he was holding the, the, um, the bear or what. I just know I wanted my luggage because it was just magical. Like, uh, he had no idea that... I was going to buy the same exact bear that he picked. And next thing you know, I opened the, <laughs> I opened up my luggage and I handed it to him. I was like, uh, here's your gift. Like, <laughs> and he goes, he was like, mm. <laughs> and you know, we laughed about that for the longest time, you know, that day. And then, you know, we went on our first date and it was just just perfect it was just absolutely perfect and we still looked at those bears and they even said well we purchased our house 10 10 years ago but wherever we lived after that always kept the bears together <laughs> so you know fast forward you know some 21 years later I never thought that our story would end this way like and it it hurts it hurts tremendously like it just rips my soul because like I still feel cheated I feel cheated if my mother was still here she would agree with me I was always very content like you know how you go into a store and your mom says you can get anything you want you know and some kids grab like two or three things I was always happy with that one thing. You know, it doesn't matter what it was. I feel like I've been stabbed twice, like with a bull's horn. I've been stabbed twice in my chest. And I just say that because, like, if you know me personally, you know, my husband and I, we wanted, we wanted babies. And we couldn't have babies, you know? So, and we were at the point in our marriage that we were going to look into adoption, you know? Because that kid, if we get them young enough, you know, like an infant, they're going to act just like us, you know? They're not going to act like um, someone their own family. I mean, it's possible that they will, but 
and we were talking more about it. It was like right during the pandemic when it first started. It's still going on, but, you know, we were talking about it, and the next thing you know, things just went down, and it went down so quickly. It's like when a fire spreads, like you think you have it under control, and the next thing you know, it's everywhere. People always ask me every so often. When I say people, I don't mean the five family members that I know that loves me unconditionally on my mother's side. Not those people, but just people, you know, not strangers, but people I've known all my life. They'll check in on me every six to 12 months and ask me how I'm doing. Like, Sometimes, sometimes I don't even respond because how am I supposed to be doing? My husband is gone and he, like, we didn't uh, divorce or break up. He was taken from me. He was taken from me. And then almost a year. To the date, like I say, he, he transitioned on November 30th, 2021. And, you know, my mom, she would, she would take my call. And she just wanted me to, to go back to live with her. And I said, no, this is my home. This was our home, and I'm going to keep it like that. And she just wanted to make it better, and she couldn't. She couldn't make this better as unless you know how to bring him back. And nothing's going to fix this. She, uh, she spoke over my life and my future. I said, no, do not claim that for me. I'm not claiming it. I don't want that. I want my husband back. This man loved me regardless. He loved me for my imperfections. He never tried to change me. I changed on my own. I learned, you know, just so many things from him. And like I said, almost a year to the date, November 4th, 2022. My mom died, and not just too much. <laughs> this is like seeing a pink paw match. I want to call my mom to tell her I'm hurting today. I'm hurting today bad, and I need my husband, and I can't. I look to the other side, <laughs> and I look to my husband, and he's just here in spirit. And same with my mom. And it's not enough. It's not enough. Like I said, when I was a kid, if you give me one thing, it doesn't matter what it is, I'm going to treasure it, and I won't bother you for nothing else. Well, if it's toys or, or a toy or, you know, crayons or whatever. And I've been that way all my life. But the moment you take it away from me, I feel like my whole world has, has been destroyed. You know, because, you know, as kids, we get in trouble at school and we're on punishment. And I just, you know, we'll just be destroyed, you know, if something was taken from me, like my car or something like that. Like, well, you're on punishment, so you got to ride the school bus and, like, until your grades are up or whatever. And it's, it's, to me, this is, it's irreparable. It's absolutely irreparable. You know, I try to show gratitude. I try to show gratitude uh, for everything. You know, you know, my home, you know, Chowder and Luna, since my oldest transition, she used to sit over here in this chair 
right here. She used to sit right there and wait for me because I would come in here. Uh, I would come in here to pack my orders, like things that I sold. Um, you know, I would print out labels. And that's why I'm in here today because um, I needed to pick up the two labels. And she would wait for me. And um, but I felt like she left a lot sooner than she should have left. But I think when my husband didn't come home, um, that's when a part of her became broken because I noticed she started losing a lot of weight and things like that. And, you know, I could hear my husband telling me, Tiff, you got to get up. You got to get up. And I said, no, I'm not getting up because I fell. I fell from the bathroom into my bedroom, and I said, no, I'm not going to get up until you come. <laughs> and I said, I'm waiting for the garage to go up and the kitchen door to slam for him to say, boo-boo, I'm home. And I just laid on the floor for the longest time. And I had to get up, and I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to get up, but I got up. So, and just when I thought things were like improving, uh, that's when my mom she she died, and and I just literally was like, the what the fuck? Like you see me here, you know my situation. Why are you doing this? But. <sighs> But everything is a purpose behind everything. I know. I know there's a purpose behind everything. It's just like, you know, our time runs out when it runs out. And those contracts are serious, you know. And I didn't barter, you know, like they say the grief stage, like, you know, bring him back, and I'll do this, bro, I shouldn't have to do that, you know, I didn't have to do that, like, Henry, in my eyes, was just my, you know, my perfect crystal without the imperfections, even though we all have imperfections, you know, and, and I just say he was perfect in every way, because I learned so much from him, like, when, when I first moved to Cali, you know, uh, we stayed with his parents for a little while. And there was this rumor going, I wasn't even in that city or that area for not even a full calendar year. And I didn't know anyone but his family, that's it. And one of his family members had, was basically spreading a rumor about me. And I was livid, like... They were, she was basically telling um, people in the family, you know, Henry's girlfriend is pregnant. Henry's girlfriend is pregnant. I saw her at the store. And I had one of those dresses on. They're like a baby doll type dress. That's I think that's the style. I'm not really big on styles and stuff. And I had one of those on. And it's purposely meant to rise up underneath like your breast area you know top of your stomach and she started telling people that and I was insulted because we're staying in his parents house you know and until we're ready to do what we gotta do you know and I'm like do you realize you, what you're saying like this is their home and they don't want people getting freaky in their home like I really wouldn't want that, you know, and, you know, it was like, wow, and even if we, even if Henry and I were pregnant, you know, or having expected in our baby, don't you think that that's our business to tell? I mean, I'm, even when I go back to that memory, I feel livid, you know, but Henry, I mean, his parents gave me their, the lady's number, 
And I remember yelling at her and releasing, you know, the beast on her. And I couldn't, I felt uh, entitled to do that. And she ended up hanging up, even though she was trying to apologize. Uh, I just guarantee you, she never opened her mouth about anybody else, I promise you. Next thing you know, I think she rang the doorbell or she just came in. I'm not sure. But she did not walk in that house completely. She just stood right there when the front when the front door opens. She just stood right there, and I was still ripping her a new one. And um, Henry showed me more of who Henry is, and I try to be like that today. He got up off the sofa where he was sitting beside me because he knew the situation and he knew we both wanted kids and we knew that it may be difficult to conceive and things like that. So that's why I was hurt. I was hurt because of that. And I was hurt because imagine if we weren't ready to tell, you know, women understand it because you could be pregnant and uh, miscarry because you're high risk and you're telling something that's none of your business to tell. So Henry gets off of the sofa. I don't know if he had his arm around me or we were holding hands, um, you know, because he was trying to calm me down. And But he went over there. He didn't say nothing to her. He just put his arms around her and hugged her. And, like, and I'm still mad. I was like, no, 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 Henry. You know, that's what I was saying in my head. Like, no, you know, get back over here because we're mad. <laughs> you know, but he just showed me that you've already said what you had to say. That's like, you know, you're physically beating someone or fighting someone and they're not fighting back anymore. So, you know, you have to step, you have to stop and you have to walk away. Say what you need to say and that, and it's done. It's done. Like, she's already crushed. You have broken this woman. <laughs> I bet you, like I said, I don't think she ever went to tell anyone else's business ever so because it wasn't her place to say anything so i'm sitting there embarrassed that she was running around saying that so because of her actions we felt like we needed to move on with our our lives a lot quicker like we need to speak this up and get out of your parents house because i'll never forget the expression um that was on henry's mom's face she was like you're pregnant like I wanted, I wanted to give them that gift. Like, nothing is more greater than, one, financially, to be financially stable and to give um, your parents or your in-laws the next generation. Nothing's more important than that, and nothing's more beautiful. And I said, no. But like, a lot of women will say, no, they're not pregnant, and then, like, two months later, they can't hide it anymore type thing, you know, but... That wasn't the case for us. And I really want to give that gift to um, Henry's mom because, you know, she had health issues and she ended up passing before we even got married, you know. So it was really important to us, but it just didn't happen. So, you know, like I said, Henry and, and I were just perfect together. Like, not, co not codependent, not codependent. We just really enjoyed our time together. And uh, I'm disappointed. And I feel cheated, like I say. Like, you know, when you order something online and it don't look nothing like the picture, that's how I feel like. No. And what brings me a little comfort is the 21 years of tremendous memories. So... Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you, and as always, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I, I can't tell you what to do, but this is just a suggestion that, um, this is just a suggestion that you take the time as, as often as you can to spend time with the ones you love. Don't wait till the calendar dictates your life saying oh yeah it's time for you to uh, celebrate your mom it's time for you to celebrate your child because or whoever and what if they don't even make it to their next birthday like this shit is real 
this shit is real. I just could not. <sighs> no one else was uh, perfect for me other than Henry. And, you know, I did all that I could to to keep him safe and take care of him. I remember his mom telling me, and she was blind, you know, at the time. She, she can see now. But, <laughs> you know, she transitioned. But she said, take care of my son, Tiff. And I said, I will. And I was so happy. I was happy that she wasn't, because she didn't really like me when I first um, came here, you know. And like I said, she was blind. And it was hard for her to see who I really was. Like, like you don't need your eyes to see a person's soul. But it was like she finally was like, you know, in so many words, you know, I love you because you love my son. I'm like, absolutely. Like, it's just going to be us till the wheels fall off type thing. It ain't no, and even if they fall off, we're going to put them back, back on, you know, and keep enjoying life. And, um, because she, she said, <laughs> she said that she wanted her son to marry a Mexican girl. I'm like, well, he don't like Mexican girls. He loves me. <laughs> and she says, I know, but I want that for my son. And I said, well, that's not going to happen. Like, we already stuck together like double-sided tape. <laughs> so, you know. And it's, it's frustrating for me. It's not about her, but, like, I don't get the luxury of breaking down in someone's arms and crying. Uh, I don't get the luxury of busting out the windows. Uh, I don't get the luxury of putting a hole in the wall. I don't get the luxury of trashing the home like they show you on movies. Why? Because um, I got to pay to have these windows replaced. I will have to fix the holes in the wall. So, you know, sometimes I do turn to making a video because I don't get that luxury of doing just that. The only luxury I get is just having a little bit of peace of mind and that I can cry in the comfort of my own home whenever I need to, whenever I want to. I can stay in bed and be basically like grumpy, you know, from um, the Care Bears as long as I want. Like, you know, it's just something, you know, and I don't wish anything bad upon anyone, absolutely no one, you know, and I don't definitely don't wish this type of pain on anyone. I feel terrible that anyone has to go through this, and I know I'm not the only one, I know that, you know, but at the same time, um, I would have loved if we could have just made it to, um, senior citizen because uh, this our our relationship from the beginning and then our marriage it reminded me of the movie up you know if you ever seen that disney slash pixar movie up and how they you know they dated well they grew up as children and you know together and then uh they dated then they got married and then you know they wasn't able to um uh, conceive, uh, well, a successful pregnancy, basically. So, you know, and I won't tell the rest, but that was basically us. And now it is us, with the exception for um, him going before me. That's why I'm upset, because, you know, he had one request for me was to make sure that they don't cover my face, like put me on a machine. And so, and I knew he would have honored that. I absolutely know that he would have honored that. Saying no, you know, just make her comfortable. Don't, don't put her on. Don't even put the oxygen. I didn't even, I've had like six surgeries and I told them to put the oxygen, um, you know, on my, in my nostrils after I'm already sedated because it felt like I was being smothered or mishandled and that wasn't the case 
it was just in my in my head that that's what it was so you know but now it's like I had to ask someone else to carry out those wishes someone is going to be make sure those type things are are taken care of like you know when I get my proxy in order the DNR the official one there's two steps to that people think just because you have a DNR that they don't have the right to put you on a machine because someone could come and ruin what you think was going to be the golden end and they're like oh no you know that's my mom you know that's my sister you know put her on the machine no you have to make sure there's another step to I forget what the form is called but I'm definitely going to make sure I have that so like if I'm meant to stay then I will but don't do anything crazy because I'm going to sue you and I'm going to be pissed so because it was time and you ruined it <laughs> so that's gonna be the end of this video I just wanted to make that quick video while I came in here to get these packing uh not packing slips but the, the labels that I print out printed out and I'm gonna get them ready you know I have amazing neighbors you know they have been so helpful to me on levels that I wouldn't have imagined one I don't like asking anyone for help but you know they'll you know they'll bring me my mail or bring the trash cans and the recycling from the curb you know and just little things like that that they don't think is a big deal but to me it's everything so yeah all right like I said don't let a candle calendar dictate your life that's why birthdays and holidays the calendar ones don't bother me that like, oh no you know we used to do this that no we didn't let that dictate our life we would just celebrate life as, as often as we could so but i do miss going you know to mexico with my husband you know i miss those you know vacations and stuff cabo was very beautiful and memorable you know anyways i'll show you